rain this uh, 45 days of beautiful weather in Tupelo has been uh, nice to, to enjoy otherwise. Uh, this is one of the best days of the year for us at, uh, at Reed. One of the opportunities that we have being a local business is to give back to the community and one way we do it is to uh, underwrite the, the Reed Tupelo Christmas Parade. This is going to be the 74th year of the Christmas Parade. Um, I guess I was minus three the first year, but uh, I've probably been the most of them since then. But uh, one of the privileges we have is working with the Downtown Tupelo Main Street Association, Lucia, Randall, and the team, the City of Tupelo uh, departments all do, really, they do all the work and the volunteers that work with the Downtown Association do, do all the work putting on this parade, which is probably the single biggest family event uh, in Tupelo uh, every year. We certainly uh, are proud that it, that it is that the popular last year, I think, was the biggest crowd we have ever had. Uh, Craig runs the parade for the Downtown Association, and uh, I think just the weather, the Clydesdales, everything. We're just so we're, we're, we're going uh, back to back with uh, another great parade. Um, every year we get to choose with the Downtown Association who to honor as our Grand Marshals. And last year, because of uh, all the heroic things they had uh, done, we had the the people in the COVID unit at the North Mississippi Medical Center were our Grand Marshals, the doctor, a nurse, and one of the environmental uh, specialists that came in and cleaned the, uh, the COVID ward. Uh, when they were running towards people that had COVID, when all the rest of us were running away from people that had COVID for, for two years. And uh, that, was, that was a really special time for us to, to get to honor them, and I think the public really appreciated that. Uh, this year, uh, we always try to pick something that, that uh, not only is uh, a real special thing for, for the community, but also maybe special this year. And um, one of the great uh, places in Tupelo, one of the great organizations in Tupelo, uh, is the Elvis Presley Birthplace and Foundation uh, for years. And we could pick the Elvis Foundation every year, honestly, for the contributions it makes every year. And uh, maybe one of them, I'll give them a chance to a little bit about uh, about those things but the um with the elvis movie coming out this year and just renewing an interest hopefully among a lot of younger fans as well as brand new fans uh, interest in coming to tupelo and coming to the birthplace and with next year i think which is 2023 is the 25th anniversary of the elvis presley festival really the two organizations at tupelo that are keep are keeping it elvis's legacy alive are the birthplace and the main street elvis festival every year that just are intentionally keeping uh, Elvis's uh, memory and, and all that that brings both economically and just uh, uh, historically and, and popular culture-wise to Tupelo. I mean, there's, there's still very few people in the world that are known by one name, and Elvis is one of them. And if you go anywhere in the world, uh, and you say, I'm from Tupelo, Mississippi, half those people will say, that's Elvis's birthplace. So, so it, we're really happy to honor the birthplace, and we've got the directors uh, behind me, the board of directors, and then the executive director, Roy Turner, and the assistant executive director. Rhonda, we've got, uh, also will be honoring our former director, uh, Dick Guyton, and uh, as, as, the, as the combined uh, grand marshals of the, of the parade. So, uh, Lucia, um, let me, uh, you'll pass me that check, and I'll just give this to maybe you and, Mayor, maybe would be a good. This is uh, this is our contribution of five thousand dollars. I'm not sure if this check itself will cash top, but uh, it should should go in uh, as our underwriting parade. Thank you. And at this time, uh, Bush, you want to say something on behalf of the downtown association? Well, we're just thrilled again to do the 74th uh, annual parade. Like Jack said, it was a huge crowd last year at the um, we're, we're counting on good weather good yeah. weather makes a big difference so we're counting on good weather and another big crowd this year I just want to um, uh, uh, express my appreciation to to Jack and to Reeds for supporting the parade and underwriting the parade it is the largest family event we have in Tupelo and also uh, my appreciation to the city of Tupelo to Mayor Jordan administration and all the departments that have a hand in getting this parade uh, underway and, and we couldn't do it without them. Thank the you, Jack and the city. You want to give the date? The date is December, this Friday, December the 2nd, 
starts at 6 o'clock, usually goes to about 8, and everything will be available, all the information will be available at TupeloMainStreet.com, all the forms if you want to be in the parade, uh, uh, Q&As, all that will be there, TupeloMainStreet.com. So, or give us a call, 662-841-6598. The theme this year, and I know all the people who work on the floats to, to win the prize, of the, the, the uh, theme is rocking around the Christmas tree. And we thought about Blue Christmas, but I just didn't have the, we just thought that wasn't probably time happy enough for people to do floats, all this we got, it probably would have been easy to have like blue floats. I like your shirt. Okay, can read. Uh, but uh, Roy, uh, on behalf of the, the, the birthplace, you want to say anything and then Henry has a director. And we are very honored. Uh, we're proud of the birthplace. We obviously think it's Tupelo's crown and jewel and everybody that visits us seems to agree with us and we're just so pleased to be honored. Well, we're, what we we're excited to, to be able to honor you all. Anybody on the board? Yeah. Uh, I thank you for selecting uh, the board be the grand marshal of, of that special event that happens, has been happening every year for your dad and yourself as well. Uh, I served uh, for the last 22 years as the chairman of the board uh, of the birthplace. And we've been fortunate with the board members that we had to select top leadership within the four walls of the birthplace, operational leadership, provide hospitality to all that come uh, to the property. Uh, we had 12 members of the board over the last 22 years. And during that time period, those 12 members contribute 80 years of time, energy, effort for the success of the birthplace. It's clear to us that, that what we've been able to do is successful. But there's so many people that need to be in that parade besides us. And it really starts with all of the Elvis fans all over the world that will never have the opportunity to come and experience the life of the board. And it is this whole group that were able to come. And they become our voices back to their countries about who we are, what Elvis is about, what Tupelo is about, how we think about certain things that are invaluable to us. And they become the voices. And the voices back to their friends. And the voices back to the people who arrange for the buses to, to roll here. There are others that ought to be a part of that parade. The number of mayors that served during that 22 year period that I was the chairperson, all worked very closely, all the time, every time, with the board to achieve the things that we had a vision for. CBB, I mean, they're in charge of tourism. They're vital to, vital to our success, and they worked every way, giving us moral support as well as, as well as funding and ideas. Uh, we had the legislative people from here in Jackson allow for us to receive millions of dollars to support the projects at the birthplace. The city gave funds to the, to the birthplace. Uh, there were just so many people a part of the success that we've been able to enjoy. And we certainly have enjoyed it, and we continue to enjoy it, and we take pride in it, and we love it. And uh, as Roy says, uh, he, he just loves being where he is and doing what he's doing. It was really a dream for him, and ended up being a dream, a dream for us as well. And, the other operational team there with Rhonda and Dickie Guyton. Dickie Guyton was there for 20 years. Rhonda's been there longer than 20 years. Uh, 
Um, so we've been very, very blessed by those people. Uh, the banks helped us. They loaned us money. They believed in us that we had financial integrity and it wouldn't be a problem for us. Uh, the people that really benefited for us, from us, were those that came to the birthplace without a dream. They come from disadvantaged environments, many of them, busloads of them, mm -hmm. from all over the world. And they come, in many instances, without a dream. We have Elvis to show them, by example, how you can become with disadvantages. Mm -hmm. And he is the example that we have. And those are the people that we feel like that we have really served well all over the world about what we do. So we're delighted to be a part of the program. Delighted to be here with y'all. Thank you. Henry, well, here, and, and Henry, won't, uh, he, he dodges a lot of uh, acclaim, but of all those, of all the directors and everything, it's certainly been great to have Henry in that leadership role leading it. Uh, Mayor, do you want to say that? Sure. Um, you know, the city of Tupelo just honored to, uh, you know, help out and be a partner with the with Reed's Christmas Parade, obviously the birthplace, and we've got another project together uh, coming up, and, and hopefully that will be, you know, continuing for decades to come. You know, going back to my childhood, I believe if you were from Tupelo or from any surrounding town, you have memories of the, of the Reed's Christmas Parade, and I sure do, and I, I, I remember it was the coldest day ever, <laughs> you know, the coldest day of the year, so hopefully that won't be the case. Had a great year last year, record numbers. Uh, if we have a, you know, a good night, we should have out that this year, and it was just great to see everybody out last year, so come on out December 2nd. You'll have a great time. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, just finishing up, I'll say that on a personal note, in 1977, I was practicing law at Mitchell McNutt, which was the city attorney. And on August 16th, uh, the phone started ringing at, city, at, the, at the, our law firm. And, and my wife, Lisa, was actually working at the Community Development Foundation. Their phone was just were In fact, their phone was froze. That was when operators, I guess, were still pulling in. And, they, and they, there were so many calls coming in. Is it true? Elvis is dead. Is it true? Is it true? Is it true? And we started, the city started receiving checks, $50 from Mary Beth and Sammy in, you know, Missouri, $100 from Dr. So-and-so in Las Vegas. And uh, Mr. Guy Mitchell, who was the city attorney, uh, senior partner, came in to me and he said, uh, he was that old school, wonderful Southern attorney, he called me Mr. Reed, even though I was 24 years old. He said, uh, Mr. Reed, we're gonna have to figure out something to do with this money. Uh, he said, I think we need to form a foundation. I don't have any idea how much money is going to come in, but he said, we're obviously, the city's going to need to do something. And that was the, the, the germ, something uh, to honor Mr. Preston. And he said, I think perhaps you have a better appreciation for his music than I do. Why don't you draft it? <laughs> so, uh, so I actually was the, 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 the lawyer that wrote, that, that created the Elvis Preston Foundation, interesting. But uh, from that uh, from that germ that you know that day those first monies coming in I mean look look where we are today what a wonderful uh, tribute to the community spirit and the the, the whole idea of, of honoring Elvis in, in the in the right way and taking advantage of an opportunity to influence people in the right way for it. so um, I think uh, that let's see anybody else any other direct questions we got Craig we get all the notes on the time and everything. Um, so, uh, any other questions? If anybody wants to get any separate interviews, uh, feel free to do this. Include the press conference.